that this too, too solid flesh would melt, thaw, and resolve itself into a dew, or that the everlasting had not fixed his cannon against self-slaughter. Oh God, God, how weary, stale, flat, and unprofitable seem to me all the uses of this world. Fie on our fie, tis an unweeded garden that grows to seed. Things rank and gross in nature possess it merely, that it should come to this. But two months dead, nay, not so much, not two. So excellent a king that was to this Hyperion to a satyr. So loving to my mother that he might not be teen the winds of heaven visit her face too roughly. Heaven and earth must I remember. Why she would hang on him as if excessive appetite had grown with what it fed on. Yet within a month, let me not think on it. Frailty, thy name is woman. A little month, or ere the shoes were old, with which she followed my poor father's body, like Niobe, all tears. Why, she, even she, oh God, a beast that once discourse of reason would have mourned longer, married with mine uncle, my father's brother, but no more like my father than I to Hercules, within a month. Ere yet the salt of most unrighteous tears had left the flushing in her galled eyes, she married. Oh, most wicked speed, to post with such dexterity to incestuous sheets. It is not, nor it cannot come to good, but break my heart, for I must hold my tongue.
or not to be, that is the question. Whether it is nobler in the mind to suffer the slings and arrows of outrageous fortune, or to take arms against a sea of troubles, and by opposing, end them. To die, to sleep, no more, and by a sleep to say we end the heartache of the thousand natural shocks that flesh is heir to. Tis a consummation devoutly to be wished, to die, to sleep. chance to dream, ay, there's the rub, for in that sleep of death what dreams may come when we have shuffled off this mortal coil must give us pause. There's the respect that makes calamity of so long life, for who would bear the whips and scorns of time, the oppressor's wrong, the proud man's contumely? the pangs of disprised love, the law's delay, the insolence of office, and the spurns which patient merit of the unworthy takes, when he himself might his quietus make with a bare bodkin. Who would fardels bear to grunt and sweat under a weary life, but that the dread of something after death the undiscovered country from whose born no traveller returns puzzles the will and makes us rather bear those ills we have than fly to others that we know not of. Thus conscience doth make cowards of us all, and thus the native hue of resolution is sicklied o'er with the pale cast of thought, and enterprises of great pith and moment, with this regard, their currents turn awry and lose the name of action.